Hi, I'm Salvatore Pabonis, and today's lecture is an introduction or explanation of the Sociology 2000 midterm exam. Our exam will be held online via the Blackboard system on Monday, April 23rd, during the nominal class period of Mondays from 2.05 to 3.55 p.m. Now, this is actually why our class has a time slot, despite the fact that it's online and all the lectures are on YouTube. The reason is that I wanted to make sure you didn't have conflicting classes during this time slot that I use for the exam. Now, the exam can be taken any time during that two-hour time slot, but you'll actually only have one hour for the exam. I suggest you start the exam sometime close to 2 o'clock, started at 2.05, 2.10, um, just to make sure that nothing goes wrong and you don't run out of time for the exam. But in theory, uh, if you start the exam at 3 o'clock, you should still have one hour. But I do have to warn you that you have only until 4 o'clock to finish the exam. And at that point, the exam disappears and you're no longer able to uh, write into it. So make sure you start 2.05, 2.10, no later than 2.30. I want to warn you absolutely up front, if you start this exam late, as late as 3.05 or 3.10, you won't get your full hour for the exam. Because no matter when you start, the exam absolutely must be over by 4 o'clock. Okay. Once you do start the exam, you'll have exactly one hour from the time you start to finish the exam. So if you start at 2.05, your exam will automatically close at 3.05. If you start at 2.06, your exam will start it automatically end at 3.06. I hope there's no way I can be clearer than that. To be absolutely sure that you get your full hour for the exam, start a few minutes after 2 o'clock and everything will be fine. Please don't push your luck starting later than 2.30. Most well-prepared students will be able to answer the multiple choice questions very quickly, within half an hour, leaving at least half an hour for you to focus on the essay. And the theory for the exam is that you'll spend half an hour on the multiple choice and half an hour on the essay. But those are not separately timed. So if you're able to rush through the multiple choice in 15 minutes, if you're super well-prepared, then you'll have a lot more time to work on the essay. On the other hand, if you haven't prepared and you really don't know your material and you agonize over each question, well, then you'll end up with less time for the essay. I want to stress, at exactly 2 p.m. at Monday, 23 April, the exam link will appear on the class backboard site. Uh, if you're there early, I mean, if you happen to log in at 1.59 p.m., the link might not be active. Uh, but uh, if you don't see it active at 2 p.m., just refresh your Blackboard, you know, uh, log back in, and it should appear for you anytime after 2 p.m. And please, I want to stress, do start as close as possible to 2 p.m. You can click on the link. You'll see uh, down here exactly what it should look like. It should say, midterm exam, take on April 23rd, except it won't have the closed marker. It'll have an open marker that you can click on it. Once you click through to that link, it will take you to the exam. Uh, once you click on the exam itself, you'll see a page that looks something like this. Begin midterm exam, which has a time limit of one hour. And of course, when you press begin, that's when your time will start for your 60 minutes. Only once you press this orange button that says begin, will your time actually start counting. Okay. Everything in the watch and read sections of our weekly material is fair game and examinal, examinable on the exam. Now, obviously, I'll only be drawing questions from those videos and readings that are explicitly assigned. In some places, I've asked you to go out and find your own article. Now, please don't be pedantic and ask me, are, are people going to be examined on articles they found themselves? Obviously, I would have no way to know what article you found yourself, so I can't examine you on it. But, but anything that I've specifically asked you to watch or to read uh, is examinable. Now, the 
uh, quite the videos that I've set for you, that I've given you PowerPoint slides for, that I've you know, given you all of this detail with uh, you know, key terms highlighted in yellow, that's obviously where I'll be focusing my questions. But I will also ask questions about the ancillary material, about the other videos I ask you to watch. When it comes to the lecture videos where you have PowerPoint slides, I tend to ask you very specific questions about the specific terms that I've highlighted. But when it comes to more general you know, videos I've just asked you to watch for general knowledge, I'll ask you more generic questions about you know, what was the video about or you know, what is the basic message of the video. Um, I'll try to a ask questions that anyone who's genuinely sat down and watched the video should remember and it should click in your head and you should actually be able to answer the question. At least answer it based on one of four multiple choice options. Appropriate study for this exam. Now what I'd like you to do in order to prepare for this exam is watch the video when it was assigned. I'm not asking you to go back and re-watch all the videos if you actually watched them in the week it was assigned. I think you should read the articles when they're assigned. So anything in the read section, you should have read it during the week it was assigned. But then before the exam, I would recommend you review all of the lecture PowerPoint slides before you actually take the exam. And that should refresh your memory for those things, those specific questions that you, know, you might have forgotten the specifics, but if you see them again on the PowerPoint slide, it should rejig your memory and you should be able to answer the question. The exam consists of 50 multiple choice questions and one essay question. Each multiple choice question will have four answers, only one of which is correct. And I want to stress only one of which is correct. Uh, I ask very straightforward multiple choice questions. There are no tricky questions. There are no almost answers. There is no you know, answer A, B, A and or B, A, A and B, A or B, A plus B, nothing like that. All you'll get are simple questions that have you know, a question, four possible answers, one of those answers is clearly correct, and four, three of those answers are completely wrong. There are no if and buts almost, one right answer, three wrong answers. If you can recognize the right answer, you win. Answer every question as best you can. Guess if you have to, uh, because there's no penalty for guessing. A wrong answer is a wrong answer, and you can't skip a question. You have to answer every question. The essay question will be an integrative question, giving you the opportunity to showcase knowledge you've gained throughout the semester. So it'll focus on integrating your knowledge of all the things we've studied development, sexual abuse, refugee issues, international data sources. I'll give a hint, I'll most likely ask a question about how gender intersects with refugee flows as something that will give you the opportunity to discuss, you know, peripheral versus core states, you know, high income versus low income countries, uh, gender topics, power and gender relationships, intersectionality, you know, uh, where you can get data about gender and development. You know, all of these, these things will come together in a single question. Okay. You'll be expected to focus on knowledge gained in class. Note that that is highlighted in bold and yellow text. I'm even underlining it here with my mouse. This is not an essay question about how smart are you? How much did you know before you came to class? You know, how much have you read outside class? What other classes have you taken? This essay question is not about any of that. This essay question is about the things we've actually studied in our class, which means that if you are a brilliant essayist, but you know nothing about our class, you're likely to fail the essay question. On the other hand, if you know a lot about our class, but you're not such a great writer, um, you'll probably still do well, I hope, on the essay. The exam can only be taken in a linear order. Now, I know everybody likes putting questions aside, coming back to them, etc. The exam has been designed, I'm sorry, to be in a linear order. And that's just the technology and the way it works. And I promise that's best for you anyway. 
you know, there's a premium on speed in this exam. If you had to go back and you know, double check questions, it would just slow you down too much. The way it's going to work is a question will pop up on your screen, you answer it. Next question pops up, you answer it. And, and once you've answered a question, like just move right on, you know, that's the end of it and move forward to the next one. You know, there are no mechanisms for going back, for saving questions for later, nothing like that. You answer each question in the order it's received. Okay. Questions will be offered to you in a random order and answers will be offered to you in a random order. So don't try to do any tricks like, you know, tell someone else the pattern of answers is A, B, A, B, B, uh, because the pattern will be different on their test than it was on your test. Um, look, just in good faith, see the question, answer it as best you can, life moves on and you move on to the next question. Try to answer the multiple choice questions as quickly as possible to save maximum time for the essay question. This exam is designed to reward those who've done their studying. And if you've done your studying, the multiple choice questions should be easy. If you haven't studied and you try to look up answers to the multiple choice questions, you'll quickly run out of time to do the essay question. Grades will only be marked after I've uh, uh, grades will only be distributed after I've marked both the multiple choice and the essay questions. So um, I'll get back to you with grades once the essay is graded. Okay. This is an open book exam, but I strongly encourage you to study for it, to treat it as a closed book exam. Look, it's only open book because our technology does not allow me to lock down your computer system or your phone, you know, to prevent you uh, from getting information from other sources. I have no choice but to give an open book exam. Um, that said, uh, if you treat it like an open book exam where, you know, you don't study in advance, you just assume you can find the answers, you are not going to have time to finish this exam. You're not going to have time to write your essay. Uh, you've got to study for this exam in advance. You have to know the questions uh, before they come up, not look up the answers after you've seen them. Okay. You are expected to take this exam under examination room conditions. That means even though it's open book, it's not open person. You can't ask other people for help. You're not allowed to work together on the exam. And this is something that I just have to ask you uh, to be faithful about. Uh, you know, universities have honor codes, and I have to ask you on your honor not to work with other people on the exam. Now, if some of you think, you know, that's not fair somehow, that, you know, some people might cheat, I'm just going to remind you that papers are done the same way. When you write a paper for any class at the University of Sydney, it's on an honor system that you won't work with other people on your paper, that you won't ask them to write your paper for you. You simply sign on your honor that this is your own work. Well, it's exactly the same with this exam. You are on your honor to provide your own work for this exam, not somebody else's work. Okay. You can consult any non-human materials you want. If, if you want to use your phone, use Google, have a set of dictionaries next to you, you know, have all your slides printed out and sitting in a pile, go right ahead. But I'm telling you right now, it's not going to help you. You simply don't have time to look up the answers. To put this in context, you are going to have to answer a multiple choice question on average every 30 seconds. I know that says minutes, cross that out. Uh, that's supposed to say seconds. I'll fix it in the slides after the recording is finished. Um, you have to answer a question every 30 seconds. There is no way you can do that while looking up the answers. Okay. In order to do well in this exam, you should treat it as a closed book exam. You should study in advance, go into the exam knowing the material, and answer each question quickly as it comes up. The exam will be graded on the rubric given in the unit of study outline, which converts raw number correct into the recorded exam mark. Now, I get a lot of complaints about the rubric. That's why it's right there in the unit of study outline, so that by registering for this class, you've already agreed to it. Uh, now, what this rubric means is that, look, if you miss seven questions on a 50 question test, that's an 86% score. You know, that's seven questions wrong, 14% off is 86%. Now, 
I know that the University of Sydney, in some theoretical sense, 86% is worth high distinction. It's an amazing score. But I'm here to tell you that in the real world, getting 86% right on a multiple choice test is a B. It's a credit. It's all right. I, I mean, it's not terrible. Uh, but, you know, it's not going to get you any amazing accolades out in the world. Okay. So uh, what I've done is I've asked straightforward questions of the same type I would ask if I were teaching in the US or Asia or Europe. Um, and I've created a rubric that maps those scores onto an Australian scoring system. The Australian scoring system is really designed for essays. It was not designed with multiple choice questions in mind. Now, I know some of you take multiple choice tests in other classes where they just grade you on the straight score, 86% is a high distinction. But those other classes have to give you super difficult questions and super tricky questions to try to trick people into getting the, enough wrong answers to bring their scores down to reasonable levels. Now, I'm not asking you any tricky questions, and I'm not asking you super picky questions. I'm just asking you normal, straightforward questions and applying a rubric to the scores instead. I guarantee you that from a testing science perspective, that is far the superior way to do things. And from a learning perspective, it's far superior. I don't want to grade you on your ability to out-trick a trick question. I want to grade you on your knowledge. And to do that, I have to apply a marking rubric in an Australian context where 85% is considered high distinction, you know, super distinction. Okay. The essay question will be graded subjectively on standard essay qualities. What I'll be looking for is a well-informed essay in which you use knowledge gained in class to answer the question posed in a well-structured uh, and well-written essay. Okay. The final exam mark will simply be half the multiple choice score and half the essay score. Uh, put them together, average them together, and you get final exam mark. Okay. In principle, in theory, you're expected to take the exam on a University of Sydney computer in a University of Sydney computer lab. Now, I know many of you are unlikely to do that, and you're likely to take the exam at home. I can't stop you from doing that. What I can say is that you're expected to take the exam on a university computer. What that means is I cannot give special consideration for non-university misadventures. I mean, if you take the exam while caring for a child at home, on the assumption the child will stay asleep and the child wakes up and you know needs to be cared for you know I'm sorry uh, I mean you're supposed to be in a university computer lab um, if your pet destroys something while you're taking the exam or won't stop barking you know I'm sorry you know, neighbors stop by there's noise in your neighborhood you know your equipment fails what if electricity goes out in your house you know again I can't be responsible for that I can only be responsible if there's a misadventure that can be documented as occurring in a university computer lab. So if you're taking the exam and in your university computer lab the ceiling falls in and everyone has to be evacuated, well, you know, I'll give you a special, uh, a special consideration and we'll work out something to give you an alternative exam. Uh, but if that happens, you know, we'll have a documentation of it through uh, Sydney IT services. Um, make sure you reserve yourself a space in a computer lab, uh, you know, in a quiet lab where you can work unhindered. Um, you know, I strongly recommend you just go to campus, reserve a lab spot, and work on the exam on a university computer. Okay. I absolutely severely recommend against trying to take the exam on your phone. I can't stop you from doing that. But I really want to stress, I cannot and will not give special consideration if something goes wrong and you're not in a university computer lab. I simply can't do it. Okay, the sort of thing you would expect, the sort of very straightforward questions, uh, you know, that, that I would ask on this exam are things straight from the slides. For example, the fact that no part of the role can be studied in isolation due to the possibility of cultural diffusion is related to and I'll leave you to figure which one of those it is. It's only one of those. Only one of those has been talked about in our class. And the other three 
have never been mentioned in our class. Okay. Similarly, the first European country that announced its open door policy for Syrian refugees in September 2015 was, and again, if you've listened to the refugee lectures, which heavily focused on refugee flows sparked by the chancellor of one particular country who invited in refugees from Syria, uh, causing a mass flow of refugees from Syria to Europe, uh, this should be a really obvious answer. Okay, key takeaways. First, the midterm exam will be held online starting at 2 p.m. on Monday, 23 April. Look, start any time between 2 and 2.30, but I strongly recommend that you start the exam no later than 2.30 p.m. No matter when you start, you'll have exactly 60 minutes, one hour, to complete the exam. Second, the multiple choice questions on the exam test recognition memory. So it's more important to know the answers than to have good test taking skills. If you've studied, if you've watched all the material, if you've read all the material, you know, you should recognize the right answer from among a field of wrong answers. What you won't be able to do is reason to the correct answer based on logic or your general knowledge. Okay. And finally, the essay question will give you the opportunity to integrate knowledge gained over the entire first half of the semester. It won't focus on a specific aspect of the first part of the semester. It will ask you to integrate knowledge gained throughout the entire semester so far. Thanks for listening and good luck on the exam.